Hello and welcome to Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway, and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I am joined by Bill Coquinez with the Orient Area Parade Group, and you're the president of that yes, organization. Yes, yeah, I am. So talk to, us about, um, talk to us about how this event and the parade, how everything came about. Well, I think it was back in 1996, a group of people who worked at the chamber, or volunteered at the chamber, uh, and were members of the chamber, decided they were gonna have a lighted parade um, it, w it was a unique and it started out in 1996 and it started evolving, getting a little bit bigger and a little bit more need. So then they developed the Holly Jolly Folly, which is the sole, one of the main fundraisers for the parade group. And it's just gotten bigger in the last, I would say six or seven years. We believe as best we can find out that we are the largest uh, participated lighted parade in the state of Michigan. Now talk to us about the Holly Jolly um, that you The Holly Jolly, which is sponsored by Gowling Buick GMC, uh, Gowling's Pays for Everything, um, is our main fundraiser. We have a couple other ones during the year, but that's our main fundraiser, which is a dinner dance, entertainment, and a um, silent auction. And that generates 99% of the money that we use for the parade. Um, the parades aren't cheap. There's a lot of things that there are little costs here and there that seem to add up. Um, McGollings is great at helping us at everything we need with that, and we greatly appreciate that. But the Holly Jolly is a fun night. It goes from 6.30 till about 11. Uh, we still have a few tickets left okay. uh, for the Holly Jolly, and you can purchase single tickets online at our website, or if you want a table, you call me, and then I will arrange to get you guys a table. And how much usually The for? tickets are $50 a piece, or for a table of 10, $480. And when is it held this year? It'll be held December 3rd. Uh, it's a Friday night. Um, traditionally, from the day it started, it was always the night before the parade. Um, so it's a, it's a very busy weekend for the committee and myself, because okay. uh, we start out at, well, we start out basically at Collins at noon, getting it going and tear down and everything else. And when we get done cleaning up after the parade by about eight or nine o'clock, the next day, so it's it's a very very busy weekend. Right, and you mentioned that this is one of the biggest fundraisers. So, how much money would you say that you guys usually raise for that? Fundraiser? It can be anywhere between, depending on the year, depending on the site. It can anywhere between fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. It just really depends on um, the 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 crowd that we have, and we usually get around um, you know four hundred people, and then the silent auction. I know that a lot of times it doesn't add up, but we have our costs for silent auction stuff and different things we do contribute to Gowlings and paying for some of the stuff that we think we should pay for. And how do you determine who the sponsors are or how silent auction items get into that? that well, we thing? ask for anybody to, if they'd like to donate or if they can, um, I'll be very honest with they give me a real good discount, uh, we'll be more than happy to purchase something. Okay. Uh, but realistically, we get the donations or we do it that way. Um, my wife and I travel, so we may end up buying silent auction prizes in, in March because we see something that's unique. Uh, a few years ago, we were at a, the, the United States only tea plantation. Okay. So we bought stuff from there because it's unique. It's something that you don't get. And we have a lot of the regular businesses here in town that donate every year. Uh, sponsorships this year, we really didn't do any sponsorships. We did have some companies that donated. But the sponsorships for us is, are sort of tough because we're really, a, a, we're really like one of these little areas that we're only open for business for a month. Okay. And then afterwards, nobody looks at our website. It's not like you know, the, the art center, when they do their, their activities, they've got a website that people are visiting continuously or the library is the same way. So we look for donations. If people wanna make cash donations, we take it, but we don't really have a way of thanking it because People will look at our website after the parade so they can see themselves or see their kids in the parade, but they may do it once and that's it. Okay. Um, and because you guys do a great job of preparing it, editing it, and getting it out. But, you know, it's not, it's like I said, it's not like other, other things. So we, we ask for cash, cash donations, but we basically uh, budget ourselves on what we're going to bring in at Holly Jolly. Okay. And so then with the Holly Jolly, you didn't have it last year because of the pandemic. So you guys ended up still going with um, and having a parade. Talk we went last year and we did a drive around parade. Now we do have, uh, last year, 
we did have which helped is um, uh, Ed and Lloyd Co. at Ed's Broadway um, helped sponsor this. Um, and we took about 12 or 14 characters, put them in some trucks from Gollings, and we drove around all the neighborhoods. Um, we just wanted to keep people in the spirit. We social distance and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Um, also, the, the, the Coes at Ed's Broadway also every year puts on a zombie walk. Okay. And last year, yeah, we'd be last year, we did the zombie walk because we could keep everybody sort of spaced. And we actually brought in like 1200 bucks. So that really helped pay for the costumes and pay for the other things that we did. So okay. we have that one then. Uh, we also, uh, at Gollings, we put on five or six classic car shows a year and they all go to different charities. And the parade group had a, chair, uh, had a car show this year. So that helped generate up startup money. Um, okay. So I mean, it's, it's, uh, it was well worth it. Um, but that, that parade last year was very cold because we're driving around, especially doing in the village because the village has got different pockets. So okay. it was drive from here, get on the main road, drive from here. Um, it, when we did the township, it was a little bit easier because we just crossed the main roads and go into another neighborhood. But it was a great thing to mm -hmm. have. Well, I'm sure you're excited about this one. So this is Christmas in Toyland. How yep. did you guys come up with this? That was this actually title? a theme from last year. Okay. And so and what is, what's the one for this year? That, that's the it. Same right one. There. Okay. Same one. We just thought, you know what? We're going to chance it again. Hopefully okay. we don't get jinxed with it. Right. Um, yeah. We're all really excited. Everything's moving along really well. Could always use more participants. Make sure people come out to see the parade. Um, it starts at six o'clock. It leaves from Blanche Sims and goes through the village, but we're really, really excited. Um, a lot of not neat things. We've got some basic characters coming back and mm -hmm. um, different groups have come out. We have three bands come in this year. One will be, of course, the Lake Orion Band. Then we have uh, 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 Notre Dame Prep is coming and then Oakland Christian. They're gonna be the three bands. We didn't try to get a lot of bands because of we're going to be restricted back where we normally do our marshaling area. So this is going to be a long night for you because the Holly Jolly is December oh, yeah. 3rd and then the parade is December 4th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm fortunate with the help that I get from Gollings and I'm very fortunate with the committee. Everybody pitches in and then I can't thank my family enough because my kids come in and they take over the bars. They take over a lot of different things that I used to have to do that I don't have to do anymore. So I, I can't I can't thank all those those enough, of, you know, and we're always getting people to volunteer, which is great. Okay, and then let's talk a little bit about some of the costumes. They are from last year, but you have a couple of maybe some new ones that you're putting in rotation? Um, not really, um, but we have, you know, we have the traditional Mickey Mouse. We have Elmo coming, um, and Elmo is very, very excited to come. Okay. Um, we have we have the the Darth Vaders and those kind of guys, but what I think is is unique with our costume people is that they they mix in with the crowd. Okay, they don't just walk by and wave and keep going. Um, we have uh, our Goofy. Um, I basically have to drag Goofy in to take him home okay. <laughs> because Goofy does not want to leave the parade route. And Santa and Mrs. Claus can go ahead of him, but he'll still stay out there as long as there's somebody out there he can entertain. And so people are probably taking pictures. Oh, and yeah, up big time, big time. And we encourage that. We, we want to do everything we can. This, we want this to be the kickoff of everybody's exciting holiday season. And That's we've right. been sort of down the last 18 months. Um, so we want to do everything we can to make it as, as good as we can make it. And, and make it a should, happy event. Exactly, and I was about to say this should certainly um, rejuvenate things. So you mentioned that you have a few other things that you um, are doing this year. Right, well, what we've done is normally in the past when we've had our marshalling center is at Blanche Sims School. and We've always used the back of the school and um, the people that work back there, Mike Flood, John Steimel and his wife, Julie, and Chris Barnett, we usually just line everybody up and then they can pick and choose who to go, but this year, we can't go back there because of construction of the new Blanche Sims. So it's gonna be a little bit hectic in the front. We're gonna to try to line everybody up. Uh, it may be a little bit harder to get in and get out. The parade might be a little bit slower, at least till we get a few, few of the things moved out. Okay. Um,
but yeah, you go to the go there, and then who, one person from the group can go in and and register. Now, when we say register, all you're going in and say is, "Hey, I'm here," and uh, you, we'll give you your identification number. We are asking everybody, especially being because we're in the front of Blanche Sims, that they pre-register beforehand. Okay. Try to get that registration in before I think it's December 1st or December 2nd. Um, because if you do come to the event that night and register, we will register you and give you a number, but other than maybe saying your group's name, we don't have time for announcements. Right, it's we've kind gotten, of close. Yeah, we've gotten yeah. it too big. I mean, in years past, we used to be able to do that, mm -hmm. but now with it being so big and the complications of making sure we have the right numbers right. with the right floats, it makes it tough. The other thing we're not doing this year is we're not having any pizza or hot chocolate. We may have a couple vendors selling food there, but okay. we don't want to put the schools in jeopardy by having the food there and having stuff there. We're also asking that anybody, you can still go into Blanche Sims for warming and, and restrooms, but we're also asking that you wear a mask in the building. Okay. It's a requirement by the schools and we're making it a requirement for us. We don't want anybody I mean, if people are going to get sick, unfortunately, they're going to get sick, but we don't want to add to the, to the mix. Okay, absolutely. But and yeah. you mentioned that you guys have a lot of floats. So how many floats do you have? Well, right now, so I think far? we have 40 or 50. Okay. Okay, and that's, that's participants, not just floats. Okay. Um, we usually get anywhere between 75 to 80, and then the, the rest of ours are, are characters or walkers or, or stuff like that. So we average participants 120 to 130 okay. total. Um, but we'll, you know, again, we'll see. Um, I know that the choir, uh, the Lake Orion Choir is going to be out afterwards um, to sing, and they're looking for donations for their choir. They'll be by Sagebrush. We Lucky's um, uh, store will have hot chocolate, and I think there's another group going to have hot chocolate too. I'm not, we haven't confirmed that yet. Okay, well, you've got floats, big parade, dancers band, choir, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope so. I mean, we always have fun. Um, we At least we try. We try to make sure everybody has fun and don't want to see a crying face except for the ones that cry when Minnie Mouse comes up to once right. to give them a hug and they're scared <laughs> to death of them. Okay. So we also are going to have Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus mm -hmm. at the Village Hall afterwards. Uh, okay. Come on by. There'll be cookies, hot chocolate, um, some little gifts for the kids, and they get their pictures taken for free uh, by My Pick Photography. Okay. Uh, which they can get it right there and they'll be given to them a little nice little um, thing that they can display right away when they get home. That is That sounds really nice. So if people want to contact you to either be a part of the float, the parade, or They can anything. call me at my, my, on my phone, 248-802-5521, or they can go to our website, which is www.orionlightedparade.com, okay. which switched it around this year. It used to be org, now it's com. Well, we certainly want to wish you the best of luck with this Thank event. You. It sounds like it's going to be um, a nice 60 one. degree weather is what you can okay, wish for. Okay, that's, yeah. that's what you're going <laughs> to wish for. So that'll do it for this edition of Orient Outreach. I'm your host, Stacey Calloway. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.